while they're not my favorite team, they are certainly one of my favorite teams to talk about and make fun of and rip on. And by that, of course, I'm talking about the skid marks, the Cleveland Browns, from their crappy uniforms to their crappy helmets to their crappy city to their crappy front office and ownership. It goes on and on and on. Even when the years change and some of the names and faces change, they still fundamentally, until proven otherwise, are the skid marks. And they were in 2022. You know, they'd go out there and say, hey, Touchy me, rape my hole, wants to leave Houston. Let's go ahead and give up a shit ton of future draft pick capital to bring him in because that in no way is a challenge or a problem because the Browns are so desperate for a quarterback says Baker Mayfield was a bust. And let's be very clear, he was a bust. There's a reason he's gone now, because he was a bust. So they go make the massive trade to bring in Deshaun Watson, the oh, the sweet, sweet fucking irony of the guy they could have taken not once but twice in 2017, including at pick 12, where they traded out of that pick so the Houston Texans could trade into that pick to take Deshaun Watson. Like, that is skin marks all the way. So they trade for Deshaun Watson, and of course, they give him a fully guaranteed contract because he totally deserved it, but they had to do it because they put themselves in that spot, and he was suspended the first 11 games of the year. So not surprisingly, the 2022 season you knew was largely going to be a lost season for the Browns, and it was. They went 7-10, and only 3-3 three and three in the six games that Watson started. And, you know, if you were a Browns fan that wants to try and come to grips with the fact the team traded for Deshaun Watson and all that comes with that, you probably were looking for a little more hope and optimism to come away with out of those last six games of 2022 than what you ultimately got. But anyways, 2022 is in the rearview mirror and it's a new year for the skid marks. And they certainly put in some work in free agency to improve their defense, which they needed to do, build around Miles Garrett. Uh, they signed Dalvin Tomlinson, who certainly you would think is going to upgrade the interior of that line, upgrade their run defense. They bring in Okoronkwo to give another edge rusher that they really badly need next to Miles, or opposite of Miles Garrett. Bring in Juan Thorhill to address their depth at safety. They trade for Zadarius Smith. And then they trade for Dustin Hopkins recently because they need a kicker. They traded before the draft for Elijah Moore. You know, this is a team that's trying to go all in now. And that's what you got to do. You got to go all in. You can't make that deal for Deshaun Watson and say, eh, we're going to play the long game. You're not playing the fucking long game. You're playing the right now game. That's why they didn't have any first or second round picks in the draft. And, you know, we'll see what they get out of this draft class from this year. Cedric Tillman, you know, at some point in time might get a chance. We'll see. Siaki Ika could be another guy that can contribute on the defensive line as a rookie, similar with edge rusher Isaiah McGuire. Uh, Dewan Jones, we'll see if he's the long-term right tackle for this team. Uh, yeah, honestly, my favorite pick of theirs um, <laughs> on day three was Dorian Thompson-Robinson. Like, he is a legit backup talent. I don't mean that in, in a disrespectful way. I'm talking about you took a quarterback in the fifth round, and he legit earned the right to be the number two quarterback on this team. And, you know, if something somehow, some way goes sideways totally with Deshaun Watson in the next year or two, DTR has got a chance. He really does. I was really high on him coming out of UCLA, going into this past draft. I had a third round grade on him. Thought he was a great steal for them. Uh, but anyways, what are we looking at with the Browns here? What do you like? What do you not like? Well, going to start off with the running game. This team will be an elite running team like the Bears, like the Ravens, unless something seriously goes wrong. You've still got Nick Chubb, a full season of Deshaun Watson, assuming both of those guys stay healthy. It'd be hard to believe that this team's not going to be able to run the ball effectively and consistently. And then you look at their offensive line. I think it's a pretty good unit throughout. You know, not a lot of real weakness there. So if you want to give Deshaun Watson every chance to succeed, you got to be able to protect him. Well, here, especially for a guy like him that holds the ball quite a bit, this offensive line should be in a good spot to be able to do that. And then I look defensively and say Miles Garrett. He's arguably the best edge player in the National Football League. He is a future Hall of Famer, no question about that. So 
they have a foundational piece to build the rest of their defense around. Problem is, is when you go to that defense, you see a run defense that's 25th in the league last year in yards allowed. Uh, Tomlinson's certainly going to help, but how much is he going to help? One player doesn't make all the difference there necessarily. You look at the pass rush, Miles Garrett is absolutely a monster. He's a beast, but are they going to get any pass rush from anyone else? Like is an Okoronkwo or somebody else going to be able to provide some pressure off the edge? I don't know about that. And then you got to go to Deshaun Watson, right? Because this is a guy in the last two seasons, he's made six starts. Six starts. He didn't play at all in 2021. He played six games in 2022. Excuse me, but that's not a ton of game action in two years where even though you can say, well, it's year five and six in Deshaun Watson's career, there's still a lot of development and improvement and growth that could happen during that time instead of the growth of the massager's thumb up his butthole, apparently. Um, so I say that to say he has had a lot of game action in recent years, and he didn't look great when he got in last year. This team invested a lot into Deshaun Watson. He cannot just be good. He cannot just be a game manager. He can just not be average or adequate. He has to be great. He has to be elite. For the price that the Browns paid for him, he has to be a top five in the league QB. He has to get to that spot. And honestly, I'm not so sure that he's in a spot where he can get to that spot. And if he doesn't, the Browns are going to look really, really bad. And we're really going to be talking about him being the skid marks for a long, long time to come. Now looking up this 2023 schedule, I think you find out a lot about the Browns early on. You'll find out a lot about Deshaun Watson early on. You look at weeks one through four, you've got three division games mixed in there. But they host Cincinnati week one, then they go to Pittsburgh in week two. Host Tennessee in week three, host Baltimore in week four. You know, if you're the Browns and you want to have any chance of competing this year, contending in that AFC North, you got to be able to find a way to handle your business in those home games. You got three home games out of your first four. You got to find a way to get it done and handle your business there. As you go later into the year, you know, if the Browns can find a way to hang around, the schedule could be gettable if you get my drift. They go to Denver, to the Rams host the Jaguars, host the Bears, go to the Texans. Like that could be a stretch that if the Browns are still finding themselves in the race, that's a stretch that could make or break the season for them. But I, I'm going to tell you honestly, I just, I don't see any real reason to believe in the Browns right now. I really don't. I don't know that Deshaun Watson's going to get back to Deshaun Watson form of a few years ago. And honestly, this division is really damn tough too. The Steelers are no punks. Same thing with the Ravens and the Bengals certainly are the cream of the crop right now. So the Browns are going to have to have a series of unfortunate events happen to other teams. Unfortunate events happen for themselves to me to even be in a spot where they could have a winning record. And I just don't see it happening. I think they're going to be a 7-10 and 10 team. Maybe they'll win eight games, but I'm going to go more like 7-10. and 10, And I'd be really surprised at this point if the Browns don't bring up the rear in the AFC North. And give me plenty of reasons to continue to call them the skid marks of the NFL.